speaking of getting into the hobby, now mm-hmm. this is an interesting topic because I don't know how much I can input on it. So I'm going to have to leave all the reins to you if that's okay. Because I am a white male. I am cisgendered. And getting into Warhammer for someone like me is really, really easy because everyone's white males, you know? Mm-hmm. We've all got beards. We all smell. You know, it's great. Um, but what is, it, what, it's like, what is it like for, like, a woman getting mm-hmm. into the hobby? Because I, I, can, I can only un- half understand how difficult that must be. Like, how have you found it? Or, like, what sort of, like, barriers have you found trying to get into it? And obviously, like, uh, interacting with mm-hmm. the some community because there obviously are some very well known problems with wargaming communities basically how have you found it and you know can you give us some yeah. insight to what that's like yeah it's a very interesting question and very nuanced and probably varies on the area and country you're in in many ways yeah yeah I can imagine. um because for example katie and i when we we're out in sweden i li- we lived there for six months went into a oh. games workshop there three women in there playing games and it was perfectly chill amazing um Power which is great that's amazing that's really cool in in Sweden, that's kind of how the world works, right? Yeah, it's yeah. men and women on a completely level playing field, mm-hmm. and it's the socially, that's where they are. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had to describe an interesting scenario when Katie and I went to a games workshop shop probably around six, seven years ago. Okay. And we went in, and we we just wanted to buy a model. At the time, it was an Exocrine, I think, Katie's army. Okay. And they'd just come out, and they, they looked awesome. They're cool. They're basically turtles with cannons. Who doesn't yeah, want to blast sure. those? Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so, so we went in, and we, we, we went to just buy the model. And we, you know, they, they were playing games, and we are like, hey, we, we love playing the game. Like, you mm-hmm. know, will other people be interested in playing? But what we quickly realized when we were going around there is everyone had stopped playing and were just staring at it. Mm, awkward. And the, one of the question, worst, first questions we got was like, who are you buying for? Yeah. Yeah. Not, what did you want? It was, who are you buying for? Yeah. And so we, we were not interested in buying it. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. And it, it kind of put us off reaching out and going to these game shops for games because mm-hmm. it was like, oh, yeah. I, I know some shops will be more open some are not mm-hmm. um you know that's why i come back to it. it's probably fairly nuanced on where you live because i'm finding now times are changing very quickly yeah uh, really representation good. in the hobby is going out there there mm-hmm. are lots of people women on instagram who not only paint models but also play yeah um i am a big player of the game i'm mm-hmm. not the big painter you know a big painter, as I've just kind of described, I'm kind of <laughs> terrible at it. But I'm someone who loves really competitive gaming and strategic stuff. Like uh-huh. I love that side of the hobby. And you're starting to see more women get involved in that part of the playing of the game, like KT at Tactics, for example. Yeah, exactly. Of the example of someone being visible. And we've had messages recently of little girls who, like, you know, with their parents were watching it and they're like, hey, there's a girl who's playing. This is really cool. Now I want to watch. Kind yeah. of thing. And it's, you know, that's great. Like having someone who's visible that plays the game mm-hmm. makes them want to play as well because the barrier is not what the hobby is. Yeah. And a lot of people think, oh, it's sci fi, it's nerdy, it's strategic. Mm-hmm. And it's like women won't be interested. No, that's not the issue. The yeah. issue is they can't find people to relate to. Mm-hmm. And they feel like it, they may not be as accepted in that space or be seen as strange because people are like yeah. cattle sometimes. They like following the crowd a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I guess the only experience really that I've had with that is because I used to work in engineering. And mm. Obviously, that's like a very male dominated environment. Um, so there's always massive pushes um, to get women, again, like to be able to like try and do stuff that can women then can can relate to it so they can get interested in it because if they're just oh yeah there's all a bunch of old bearded blokes working in there and you know grinding away all day i'm not really bothered about that you know sounds rubbish exactly which is fair, which is I fair, work in fair enough you know <laughs> exactly i work in finance and it's exactly the same thing and they try and encourage different mindsets and different you know ways of thinking about you know problems or mm you know bring different things to different meetings so having that different perspective i think is often great whether that's women or other ethnicities whatever mm-hmm. and that's I, I, you know i think it's the hobby is changing people are beginning to accept that having more people is just more people to play games with it doesn't matter yeah, who exactly. they are yeah it's you know this is a hobby we can all share and enjoy together right and 
everyone enjoys hobby in their own way whether it's just collecting playing painting mm. and they all do it in their own ways whether it's kit bashing following what's on the box yeah um i'm someone who's partially on the artistic spectrum so it's mm -hmm. like i love my things to look like they look on the box yeah that's what they are yeah for I, sure. that, that's what they should be yeah so if they don't look like that i'm like well that's not the same i, mm -hmm. I want that mm -hmm. um but other people have these really fantastic conversions and it's like you know what go go rock it go and enjoy it yeah um but there are definitely barriers there and a lot of them you know can be perceived ones and sometimes they can be genuine because there are people out there who are very closed off to women enjoying the hobby like mm -hmm. we do get messages sometimes with people saying like oh you you know you just got these likes because you're a female or right you know you don't know what you're talking about and i get them less so in terms of how to play the game because mm -hmm maybe i come across a bit differently with how i talk about the game yeah whereas katie who's someone who's you know really as much as she's been playing a long time hasn't been playing as regularly for a long time and yeah. has kind of learned ninth with me in many ways mm -hmm. um, kind of, she's kind of on like a, a really really public platform as well so she's really yeah, it's very hard to, to grow and learn to play the game when people are watching mm. um and it is tough yeah um you know you can get comments basically saying like you, you don't know what you're doing kind of thing i was like well actually she's probably played more g games of nights than you have yeah exactly uh, and she's played it's more di you. different armies than you have <laughs> and i think she's so many people everyone gets to watch it <laughs> exactly and likewise she's not just playing the army at the same time she is doing like you know kind of a persona yeah, kind yeah. of thing like she's got to perform she's yeah you know, she's a little tired she's got to know how the camera's working she's got to know whether she's in shot she's got to make sure she gets the right things in shot mm -hmm. she's got to make sure she rolls in the dice tray she still can't do that very well in my opinion <laughs> oh brilliant so you know a lot of people can um throw judgment very quickly and because of an assumption of who you are as a character just because of you're a female mm. or you know and other people can get that from other ethnicities in different yeah in different parts of the world so, you know it's yeah. kind of the same in lots of different things like i, I played pro cricket right and, okay um i used to play some men's games as well and quite mm -hmm. often they say oh, this chick does not know what she's doing like she can't play and you go out there and they bowl a fastball at your face and you just cream it for six and they're just like <laughs> oh shit <laughs> brilliant just absolutely um, back in the face all of it <laughs> exactly and it's just like oh i did not i did not see that coming yeah well also um, i must be, but, must be so frustrating because i guess you must feel like you always have to like prove yourself because people are like oh, well you can't do this because you're a woman mm -hmm. and then you're like well i can but also do you do you feel like you have to prove yourself is that like a thing or uh is it a case if you do it anyway and then you just mm -hmm. ignore them or i think it's for me i tend to just ignore people mm. pretty well pretty well like i do, i generally do not care what other people think of me Fair. and that comes back to me being on the spectrum a little bit mm. so i don't feel and i've also got that probably slight air of arrogance i don't feel like i need to prove anything <laughs> to anyone well i don't think you uh, should have to you know i'm just curious exactly you, i uh, i feel like it. you know i i don't i don't really worry like if i win a game that's great if i lose a game did i have fun Yes. Did my yeah. opponent have fun? Yes. Do I care? No. Excellent. I think um, Katie can feel that pressure maybe a little bit more. Maybe it comes from being a bit more in the public eye in terms yep. of saying, actually, no, I can play the game. Like, she, she used to play a lot with me and, you know, she lost almost, as I said, like every game. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we let her out into the wider world, she absolutely crushed people. Like the Red Path, for example, we discussed mm -hmm. was the first time she played someone outside of me okay and she had no idea with where she was as a player for example like she thought she couldn't really play the game that well mm -hmm. um and she played the red path and absolutely crushed him nice. like it was 80 to 30 or something like it, it wasn't even close <laughs> sorry yeah, jamie get, get back in your box on, jamie <laughs> um uh, but like you know she, she's gone out there and she's winning games and tactically she's probably one of the better players on tactics Nice. they've got more experience yeah mm -hmm. but tactically in the way she thinks and plays the game like she's probably up there she's a smart cookie 
Yeah. She doesn't yeah. let it. She doesn't let it on, mm. and I don't tell her as often as I should. But she is a smart cookie. <laughs> Amazing. Chocolate Amazing. chip one. Oh, yeah. um, Best. <laughs> but she does feel that need to kind of show that she can do that, and mm-hmm. um, and I know a lot of women who feel that same pressure, whether they're content creators, sports people, mm-hmm. or in the workplace, right? So mm. sometimes there is that. I just need to show that I belong here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's quite, it's quite interesting because um, I, I, my girlfriend Georgie, she was, um, I don't know what they they had a name for it, but essentially she was a play tester for Guild Ball. If you ever heard of it, uh, which is like a, essentially like like a Blood Bowl version of another game from another company, and uh, okay. she went to a store to play. Now I don't remember the full details, so I'll try my best to remember. Uh, but essentially, she went to a store to play some games to essentially just practice playing in a new faction that they were testing. And um, yeah. she was with two of the people which were, who were both men. And um, the person at the store, well, they they all went in and Georgie said, can we get a table to play? And the, the, the gentleman behind the counter basically addressed the men and didn't really address her. And he's like, oh, what do you two want a table? And, you know, where, are, what are you guys playing? You know, and it was like, that's something mm. that's quite you know it's it's quite bothersome and it's a real problem but then i was speaking to tanya the war mistress um okay. uh, on scary stream and i told her about that story and we thought of a really cool idea where we could also do like almost do like secret shopper of being like going into a war game because we and georgie do it right uh we go into yeah. like we go into like hobby shops and stuff but we don't test them but we do because we'll go and she'll buy something and then we'll see who the person behind the counter addresses. Do they address me because I'm the man or do they address Georgie because she's buying the stuff? You know, mm-hmm. and I think it's always like it's an a interesting, very exper- interesting one. Yeah, it's an interesting experiment. Yeah, I, and K- 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 Katie and I, weirdly, even as a um, same-sex couple, we mm-hmm. go into shops. Mm-hmm. I get addressed more than she does because I'm six foot seven. I'm Way too tall, by the way. Wow, six. I and think you're tall, but Jesus, wow, <laughs> impressive. <and she's> <laughs> yeah, like you should see my parents; they're pretty tall. Mm. Um, but Katie's five foot three. Like she's below average, but to be honest, I'm the freak here. <laughs> and um, we're in shops, and almost all the time they address me. Mm. She could be the one that initiates the conversation, and they'll then come back and respond to me because. Mm. I because think because I'm the I'm the taller, I'm the bigger one. Mm. Um, that's where the rights kind of go to. So it'd be an interesting experiment, maybe if I you know, go down the psychology route of whether it's oh, maybe a height thing, because maybe mm. like if you're you know, the male in the relationship and you're smaller, mm. maybe you don't get those kind of things. Do you know, same sex guy couples have similar problems? Interesting. Or people who are the same size size and same sex does the person just freak out and not know who to talk to and just turn around and just say nothing that's really interesting we need to set this up we need to film it all and compile it yeah. as evidence also katie is in chat right now and she says you're giving me too much credit i'm five two <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, to be fair i knew that but um <laughs> Just it, I, my memory is like five two and a quarter and <laughs> i round up very generously oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> excellent yeah. so yeah anyway if you're ever in a war gaming store and you're in a relationship try it or like with someone else and just try it see what happens and let us know your findings because i think it's really interesting and like again it's the psychology of it is it because they are uh it's like unconscious bias you know really that's mm-hmm. what it comes down to right um I don't know. It's, I think it's interesting. It's very strange. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I think it's definitely that unconscious bias of someone who's in control. And it's like when a kid asks a question or wants to buy something from a sweet shop, they then talk to the parent. Yeah. yeah and, the, exactly. and the parent's like, no, I'm like, I'm like, don't talk to me. The kid's doing this. I want to talk, you know, play on my phone, for example. Yeah. The kid, the kid, the kid can handle this. <laughs> um, um, but naturally, you want to talk to the person you think is in command. Mm. Mm. Everyone's saying that I round up my height as well because I'm five eleven, but I like to tell people I'm six foot. 
It's, it's, see, that, that's not one number you've rounded kind of thing. That's all three <laughs> numbers. It's only one number. It's only one number. No, you've changed three. <laughs> it's not five, one, one. You've changed it to six, zero, zero. That's three numbers you've changed. <laughs> no, that doesn't count. That's not, that's illegal. <laughs> Um, Joe in chat says thank you very much for your input Maxine I see my daughter getting more and more interested in the models I'm painting I want to be able to encourage her if she chooses the wallet destroy my hobby <laughs> that's great just plow money at her yeah that's it just, <laughs> throw money just keep daughter. throwing plastic <laughs> and then uh, and that's beautiful to hear and I, you know I love hearing these messages that more girls women young mm. old are just getting into the hobby and you know, just trying out their, you know, what their love is, whether it's the law that's bringing them in, whether they just want to read the books, whether they just want to paint, whether they like mm. building these epic conversions, or if they just want to go and kick some bird on the table. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think, like, the more um, diverse that we can make the hobby, the better, because, no offence, I don't want to play against white men all the time, you know? It gets boring, mm -hmm. it's repetitive. They're all playing the same army that's anyway. True. I need a different person across the table, you know? <laughs> Yeah, we've all got we've all got Admech and Drakari. So yeah, you, exactly. <laughs> so it doesn't all... matter what's on the table. <laughs> it's always the same army. <laughs> uh, exactly. But yeah, it's just more friends to play with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I think exactly. That's, yeah. I guess from my point of view, it's like I don't know what how to best like promote that because I am, you know, I am the majority, so it's really hard to like. Un it's, I, I can't understand what it must be like on the other side. And I find it quite difficult to know what's right to do to make it more welcoming. So I guess having someone mm -hmm. like yourself come on and, and give that insight is uh, really helpful. So it's really been helpful to me and maybe hopefully it's been helpful to you guys at home as well. So, well, I'd say that what you're doing is the perfect example. It's giving someone potentially a platform just to quickly voice it maybe. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you know, highlight the fact that it's down to the individuals to make that kind of, change right like you, mm. you can't just wave a magic wand you as my can just go right i'm gonna solve it by saying this is what you should be doing now. yeah the person on the other end the people watching the streams the people in the shops yeah. just to make it normal right like don't treat us any differently you <laughs> play the games like you play a game if you lose the game to a girl it's not because she's a girl. You don't get more angry that she's a girl. <laughs> yeah. If you beat the girl, it doesn't mean it's because she's a girl. It's because she sucks. No, it's just because she sucks. It's not because she sucks, but not because she's a girl. She just sucks. Yeah, exactly. Either way. The onus is on the individual yeah. to make it normal. Yeah, exactly. I agree. I agree. And that's the best way to treat it. I, me personally, the way I treat uh, my any, any day experience is treat everyone the same, you know? So, yeah, unless, and my experience at the events. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. My experience at events have been like, I've been treated no differently than anyone else. Nice. Whether I win, whether I lose, mm. literally, I just feel like I'm a human there. So, yeah, that's fair. That's really good to hear. <laughs>